All right, so we'll try and get started. Uh, I'm Paul Lepp from NIST and the Drake Water Institute. Um, we have a series of 12-minute of talks. Uh, it'll be 10 per talk and two per questions. Um, the first talk is complete characterization of bright entangled twin beams with analysis cavity method. Gaurav Gaurav. Uh, thank you, Dr. Paul Lepp, for the kind introduction. Uh, Hello, my name is Dharan Nirala. I'm from University of Oklahoma. Uh, my group advisor is Dr. Alberto Anguino, and this project has been supported by Air Force Office of Scientific Research, and this project has also been in collaboration with our collaborators in Brazil mentioned here. So, uh, in past few decades, we have seen increasing application of quantum states of light, both technological and commercial. Uh, but in order to take full advantage of these uh, quantum states of lights, it's very important to do the complete characterization. One very well known met method to uh, do complete characterization for uh, to do characterization for optical states in the lab is Hohenheim detection. Uh, it was shown in 2013 by our collaborator mentioned here that Hohenheim detection does not always give complete characterization for Gaussian states. So, for example, if your state is generated by a media which has a fast frequency response, uh, your uh, the upper and lower sideband will not see the same response from the media. This would uh, can give an uh, imbalance of the information, and homogeneous detection will not uh, uh, measure this information, uh, which is the difference between the upper and lower sideband uh, noise. Uh, uh, in this uh, talk, I focus on the bright tumor free state generated using rubidium vapor. And using resonant detection, I show that we can indeed do complete characterization. So the class of states which we are interested in, the Gaussian uh, uh, states, which are the continuous variable states. Uh, the reason they are called Gaussian states because if you look at their phase space representation, uh, and you're looking at, let's say, in, uh, uh, in phase and out of phase components for the electric field, uh, the, the distribution is Gaussian in both. So for example, in case of axiom, the mean values are zero here, and the distribution is Gaussian. And similarly for the coherent state, which is just a, a displaced uh, vacuum state, again, you have Gaussian distribution with non-zero uh, mean values. The main thing to focus here, if you are only interested in the uh, quantum properties uh, of these, uh, noise properties of these quantum states, all you need to do is to uh, collect the second order moments, which are effectively captured by the coherence matrix uh, for that particular state. As I mentioned in my title slide, that there is indeed a problem with the homodyne detection. Now we can see exactly why. So what happens in case of homodyne is you have your local oscillator sitting at omega naught. It's a bright coherent state with a well-known phase. And let's say you have your state shy whose noise to noise properties you want to prove. So uh, you mix the state with your local oscillator using your using a mean spirit and uh, uh, look at the current uh, intercept difference current uh, here. Uh, if I plot my state here in the frequency domain, what you have is your local oscillator sitting at omega naught, and we will have a continuum of lower and upper side band, uh, which is belonging to the state here. Uh, what essentially what you measure using this uh, intensity difference current here is the beat node between your local oscillator and the two side bands. Uh, uh, but here uh, you can see clearly that uh, if I'm looking at a particular analysis frequency, which is basically uh, the uh, frequency at which you devolute your current here, uh, you cannot say uh, if I get a particular noise uh, current uh, noise uh, property here, whether it's coming from the lower side band or upper side band, uh, because homodyne is immune to the sign of the frequency with respect to the local oscillator. So in general, what you get is the uh, average between the information of the upper side band and lower side band. So when you're looking at the, uh, the spectral noise power for this homodyne detection, one natural basis which comes up is the standard symmetric and anti-symmetric basis, which is basically the superposition of the upper and lower uh, band operators here. So uh, if there is a in, uh, difference in the information present, uh, homodyne will not be able to measure it. Now, in order to come uh, to um, to uh, compensate for that, what you can do is go for a method which is uh, frequency dependent. So you take your state along with the carrier, which is equal to local oscillator in homodyne, and you shine it on the cavity and look at the reflected power here. Uh, if you can reconst uh, construct the cavity suitably with a narrow enough resonance, and scan the cavity using a piezo such that you are able to tune this resonance uh, to one of these sidebands, uh, you can independently manipulate them. So for example, if you are resonant with the lower sideband here, 
what happens is uh, looking at the uh, noise in the detector here, you have a attenuation because you will transmit some of the field uh, at the lower segment here. And also, more importantly, you will go through a phase change of this field here with respect to the carrying of a uh, side band uh, all the way from 0 to 2 pi. And in this way, you can independently look at the noise contribution from uh, lower side band and the carrier and the upper side band. To understand what exactly is happening, what one can do is look at the uh, uh, phase space picture. The, what is uh, happening is, let's say you are uh, scanning your cavity, and then you have your analysis frequency 6 and minus 6, which is essentially I'm looking at my side bands with plus and minus 6. When I'm scanning my cavity uh, through the lower side band here, uh, my carrier is not resonant. So this black arrow here, which is representing the carrier, is fixed in the phase space from diagram 1 to 5. Uh, and uh, the noise ellipse uh, is rotating. But uh, if I am resonant with my carrier, what is essentially happening is the homoerent detection in which uh, the phase of my carrier or the local oscillator is rotating in the phase space, and the orientation of my noise ellipse stays fixed. And similarly, you have uh, same picture with which the noise ellipse is rotating in just with the opposite sign uh, uh, when you're scanning the upper side band. So uh, as I said, in order to do complete characterization for a Gaussian state, what you do is you look at the covariance matrix, which is the second order moments in the basis I mentioned earlier. Uh, here, if you look at this, this, uh, this matrix, you have four parameters, alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. Uh, alpha and beta is your air amplitude and phase noise, gamma is your correlation between them, and delta here is the one we want to focus on, is essentially the correlation between your symmetric and anti-symmetric uh, uh, basis components. And in case of homodyne, this is essentially the parameter, which is a sort of correlation between these two bases, is assumed to be zero. So if you look at the noise power uh, expression here, you have three parameters present, and the fourth parameter is missing. But in case of resonant detection using the cavity, all the four parameters are present. So we get two things here. First, that uh, delta is missing. And second, uh, if you are looking at uh, the delta, uh, it has a very nice interpretation in terms of if you are looking at the upper and lower segment operators, is the noise power imbalance between uh, the two. So in order to show that uh, with using uh, uh, this cavity analysis method, you can indeed do complete characterization. Is what we are going to do is the following experiment in which you have your source, uh, which is, I will come to in a moment, uh, it's basically a power mixing source using rubidium uh, uh, D1 transition. Uh, it gives rise to uh, two correlated beams, quantum correlated beams, over and the conjugate. Uh, and each beam has its own carrier and the sideband and we construct independent cavities for them and scan them in order to characterize these two things. Uh, so coming back to the source, uh, I will quickly go through it. Uh, you will see this source many times today. Uh, it's basically for mixing using uh, rubidium D1 transition line. Uh, you have a bright pump, which you pass through a hot rubidium vapor. Pump acts as a reservoir of photons. Two pump photons are simultaneously converted into a probe and a conjugate photon, six gigahertz apart. One way to see that these two beams are correlated is to look at the intensity difference noise, which is uh, here for my experimental parameters are seven dB below the equivalent coherent state noise. Uh, so if you remember earlier, I showed you what kind of response I get when I scan the cavity uh, uh, and I look at the noise at my uh, uh, reflected uh, detector is, uh, so, so if there is an imbalance, you would be able to see it, looking at the noise at the upper band and lower, uh, lower side band. So here, similarly, this, in this experiment data, I'm scanning my probe cavity, uh, and I'm looking at the reflected noise power. So you can uh, clearly see that as my carrier is resonant here, the left side is uh, different than the uh, right side. So the two side bands indeed have uh, different noise features. Uh, so there is an imbalance, and similarly for the conjugate beam, you can see that uh, there is an imbalance, but uh, not so obvious, so we fit the uh, experimental data with the cavity detuning functions in order to uh, get the covariance matrix for them individually. Uh, here I have highlighted the parameter, which will be assumed to be zero in case of homodyne, uh, uh, but here which is uh, this parameter, which is the correlation between symmetric and anti-symmetric basis is uh, non-zero in both in the case of probe and the conjugate, and they have opposite sign, 
which is not so surprising. Now, uh, we can also scan both the cavities simultaneously in order to do the complete characterization of the two most key states. So here I have highlighted the parameters, which are individually the probe and the conjugate parameters explicitly mentioned here. And the parameters sitting here and here are the cross correlation between the two beams. Now that we have the full covariance matrix, we can uh, ask well, what are the further correlation between these two beams. Uh, first thing we check is whether the system is physical. So I look at the symplectic eigenvalues. If all eigenvalues are greater than one, then the system is physical. Uh, using the PPT criteria, what we do is a particular bipartition. We take one particular sideband. Here, in this case, it's the upper sideband for the probe. And the rest of the mode, we put in the second partition. And we ask the question, are, are these two modes entangled? Using PPT criteria, we find that, yes, these two partitioners, partitions are, uh, in fact, entangled. And we find that for all these uh, four modes. So uh, for summary, I have shown that omega detection is in general insufficient for the characterization of Gaussian state, complete characterization. I have shown that there is an information difference for them for uh, upper and lower side bands, both for the probe and the conjugate beams. And I construct the two mode squeeze state complete covariance matrix and show that there is integrity in the system. Thank you.